Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be showing you how you can export in HitFilm 4 Express. Okay, so you've got your project, you've got your composite shot, you've got your whatever, you've got all your effects applied to your clips, and now you want to export it. So there are two ways you can get to the export panel. One is by clicking on this button right here, or you can just go into the export tab. Now I'm on a Mac and it will be slightly different in Windows, namely QuickTime will be swapped with AVI, but we'll talk about that later. For now, the best way to export your videos is MP4 container, and it uses the H.264 codec as we can see here. So the first thing you're going to set is your timeline. May this be your editor or one of your composite shots, whatever it is, you're going to set the timeline. Then you can set the entire timeline, which in terms of the editor is 5 minutes, or in the composite shot it's 10 seconds. You can also set the content area, which is the default and what you'll mostly do most of the time, because it exports the area that you've actually got video clips in. And also, your work area, which I'll show you right now. If we go back into our, edit, into our editor here, we can see that there's this black line, and we can drag this out just by uh, dragging on it with the mouse cursor. Or we can press I to set the endpoint of our work timeline, or O to set it out, and now it will export between these two lines. So I'm just going to set this right back here, and let's just continue with the rest. So it'll tell us the length, which is really handy. In MP4, we can export video and audio, and we can choose to only export the audio or to only export the video. And now we get into the more complicated stuff. Here we've got width and height. 1080p video, which is very standard, is 1920 by 1080 Note that HitFilm doesn't allow you to export in 4K. So if we see 3840, it just goes back to 1920. So we can only export up to 1080p. We can set the frame rate. In Europe, the standard frame rate is 25, and in America, it's 30, or actually 29.97. But this frame rate should be already set to whatever the composition settings in your editor are, so you shouldn't really need to worry about. If you're doing a gaming video or something like that, and you record it in 60 frames per second, you should have it at 60 frames per second here, as is in your project tab. Alright, so the next thing is the aspect ratio. We need to keep this just as square pixels, just how it was filmed, unless you use anamorphic shooting or something like that. Otherwise, just keep it the same. Leave it at the main profile, and now we can use your level. So I think by default, it, the level is about 4, and what the level does is it changes the level of bit rates we can have. So what is a bit rate? Bit rate is pretty much how compressed a video is. The lower bitrate, the less information that the video can store for the same amount of time. If you have a really high bitrate, then it will look really smooth and really clean. This is why when you go to the cinema or when you get a Blu-ray player and a Blu-ray disc and you play something like that, it has slightly better quality than something off YouTube or Netflix or something like that. And this is because on YouTube or Netflix, it downloads it from the internet, so they use a lower bitrate, meaning that although there's less space and less stuff to download for you, it's not as good quality. So we're going to use the same principles here in HitFilm 4 Express. So we can set the level of the bit rates by going around here. If you have 1080p video at say 25, 30, 24 frames per second, now I recommend shooting at say your target bit rate to be 30 and your max bit rate to be around 50. If you're shooting at a higher frame rate, I might recommend you double that. What I would recommend you do is actually just get a small clip, such as this 10 second long one, and play with the bit rates and see what sort of results you get when exporting at different bit rates, because it's sort of subjective on what your video is. For example, in such a video such as this tutorial you're watching right now, I won't have to export as a very high bit rate because there aren't many changes between the frames. However, if you're doing a live action scene with a lot of movement, you may want to export it at a higher bit rate. Alright, so that's pretty much the, the video done, and now we can change the audio. All we can change is the bit rate. Again, a high bit rate leads to better quality, but larger file sizes, and a small bit rate means lower quality, but lower file sizes. So I'm just going to leave that 192 kilobytes per second. Alright, so that's done with MP4. 
Now we're going to move on to image sequence, which we'll just scrub through. Again, we have the same options here, except no audio because we cannot export in an image sequence with audio. So, prefix, we can just say image, and then what it will do is if we edit, if we export an image, every image, we'll say image 01, image 02, or something like that, and it will just name the images as the frames. We can change the codec. I would use JPEG instead of PNG or bitmap because those file sizes are too large and as as we're already exporting it as separate images, the file size is going to be quite large anyway. So you won't rarely ever use uh, image sequence. Now let's move on to QuickTime. On Windows, this is actually AVI, but you have similar sort of tools to work with on Windows as you do in Mac. So again, you have the same as you did in MP4 with the timeline, and now we can choose the codec. So by default, it should be AVC slash H.264. Now I would recommend not to use this. This is because the max bitrate is 14 megabits per second, which is very small. Only if you are exporting at a very small resolution such as 360 or 480p would I recommend you use this. And the keyframe interval by default is somewhere down here. So I would stay away from AVC slash H264 just because you can't set the bitrate to be very high. Instead, if you really wanted to export as a quick time, I'd go with one of these other options. So on Windows, I don't know whether you have Apple ProRes, but I'm just going to go through it anyway. Apple ProRes is a file type that has not much compression at all. So if you've ever watched a movie on a Blu-ray disc, you'll find that ProRes actually has less compression and is better quality than the stuff on Blu-ray. So you rarely ever need to export in ProRes. In fact, my computer can't even play back ProRes really smoothly. So that's something to keep in mind. Even worse than this though is uncompressed, which I believe you can export in, in Windows too. I would never export in uncompressed because the file sizes will get up to gigabytes per second. You're not actually compressing it at all. You're saving every image as it is and the file sizes are massive. Again, with all of these video codecs, you can also set the audio codec and its bitrate. I would recommend just sticking to AAC, however if you're using something like uncompressed or Apple ProRes, maybe step it up to Apple Lossless. Alright, and finally we've got YouTube. So again we've got the same sort of content things we had before, and down this YouTube account it will say please add your YouTube account before exporting your video. So just go ahead and um, add your YouTube account, press open browser, and it'll open to this page. Um, you can't see this and I'm blurring this all out, but it'll say this. HitFilm would like to view your YouTube account and manage your YouTube videos. Sure, that's fine. Just press allow and then paste, copy this code and paste it back into HitFilm right here. You'll get the account info and the details will be received. Press OK. Now you can set your title, description, your category, etc. And you can even make this video private. So there's one more thing I want to go over. Um, we've done all the basic export settings, but there's one more thing I want to go over, and that's proxying. So if we go into the edit, we can see that next to all of these clips, I've actually, next, there's nothing here, but next to this clip, I've actually got a little play button, and that means the media has been proxied. What that means is that it's sort of been pre-rendered. I'm not going to play that for you, but it's sort of been pre-rendered so that export time, when it comes to exporting, it exports slightly faster than it would if it had to render everything all the way over again. To do this, right click on your clip, either in the editor or in your media panel, and just press make proxy. It will come up with this wheel, and in due course, it will start to render the whole thing out. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, obviously, leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys later. Bye!